Hi there, this is Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 13, the volume of a cylinder. Okay, so these first three questions are part of your cool down. Okay, so it's kind of a review from your lesson or kind of a summary of it all. So look at your notes and see what you learned today. Uh, it says here the cylinder shown here has a height of 7 centimeters. So we could write that here on the side and say, well, that's 7. has a radius of 4 centimeters, so a radius would be here. Okay. You could draw a height here if you chose to. The height can go down in the middle, but it really doesn't matter too much, okay? So it's up to you how your teacher showed you today, no problem. So we know we have that information there. In our, your notes today, you should discuss that the volume of a cylinder is going to be the area of the base. Now this is a circle. So the area of a circle is found by doing pi radius squared pi r squared. That's how you find the area of a circle. Remember, a square number means, let's say I had 3, so 3 squared is the same as doing 3 times 3 for 9. So in our case here, we have a 4. So remember, it's not 4 times 2, it's squaring that there. So the volume is the area of the base times the height of the cylinder. So in this case here, they gave us the radius of 4, and they provided you with the height there. So you have all the information we need to find the volume. First question says, what is the area of the base? And it says to go ahead and leave it in terms of pi. And again, what that means is you put your numbers in there, but don't worry about what pi is. Leave it like, you know, you could have an answer, it could be like 30 pi. That's okay. It's not 30 pi, but it could be like that, and that would be okay. For number two, it wants to know how many cubic centimeters of fluid can fill the, cylind the cylinder. When we're talking about cubic things, we're trying to decide what is the volume because a volume is cubic and again leave this in terms of pi that's just fine there okay so that's we're going to be finding the volume so now we're multiplying the area right that's your area we're going to be multiplying the area times now the height using the formula and then it says give a, a decimal approximation of your answer to the second question using 3.14 to approximate pi so we're going to take your answer here. Let's say it was 30 pi, which it's not. Then we're going to turn that into 30 times 3.14 to get whatever the approximation is going to be. Now, again, it's not 30 pi, so don't use that. That's just an example there. So make sure you work that out and see what you get there. All right, moving on to the ones for today's homework practice, really. Same type of idea. Find the volume of each cylinder. Show all your work. So the first one, we have a diameter is given to us of 12. Now a diameter is twice the radius, so that means the radius is going to be 6. And so our volume is found by doing pi times the radius squared times the height. Now we know we have pi. The radius is 6, so 6 squared times the height, which is 10. 6 squared is 36 times 10 and still times pi. 36 times 10 is 360, and we keep pi like it is, because the first part says find the volume in terms of pi, so we would say 360 pi. And then when it says find the volume in the nearest hundreds, we're going to take 360, and we're going to multiply it by 3.14. And when you multiply that all the way out, whether you use a calculator or, or multiplication, just doing long multiplication practice, you end up with 1,130.40. So you can say 1130.40. And if your teacher wants you to write it out by hand, make sure you show how you get there. And if they don't mind using a calculator, then it's probably a little easier. Number five, same idea for number five, right? We have the volume equals pi times radius squared times the height. We have a radius, so pi times 9 squared times the height. This is the height here. Even though it's not standing up, that is still going to be our height. It's like that edge length of the cylinder. So that's 7. All right. So this is written sideways just to see if you're kind of paying attention to what's going on. This is the definite radius of a circle right there. So we end up with 81 times 7 times pi, right? And 81 times 7, we have 7, and 8 times 7 is 56. So we have 567 pi, and that would be our area in terms of pi. 
And then you want to go ahead and find the nearest hundredth. We're going to multiply 567 times 3.14 once again. So you multiply those together, that will give you a solution for that one there. Okay, hope that gets you going and got you helped out a little bit there. And have a great day. We'll see you next time.